Hello everyone and welcome to Finance of JCL. I'm glad you could join me today and the topic for discussion is the six types of stock as described by Peter Lynch in his outstanding book One Up on Wall Street. Now this is going to be useful for you I believe because it will help you categorize the stocks in your portfolio and then have a look at that compared to your investment objectives and see whether you've actually got the right composition in your portfolio because it's going to be different depending on your individual circumstances so therefore this isn't financial advice it's just sharing the information in the book i'll also uh, demonstrate the makeup of my portfolio in relation to the six types of stock so let's go but if we start off uh, there are four uh, sorry three types of growth stock there's the slow grower which you can see is a very much lower potential return at quite low risk. There's the stalwart, and then you've got the fast grower right at the top. And you've also got three other types, which are asset play, cyclicals, and turnarounds. We'll have a look at the detail of those, but what you can see here is turnarounds very much look like the highest risk, but there is a high potential return. But the highest potential return is probably from fast growers. I've put an arrow in that one because actually these are where you get your 10, 20, 100 baggers from. So they're probably off the scale of this graph. So that's, that's the six. Uh, let's have a look at the detail of them. So the slow growers, um, starting off with their kind of mid single digit earnings growth rates. And of course, the earnings growth rate effectively in the long run determines the stock price. And this can happen with fast growers that have kind of got to the peak of their markets and they can turn into slow growers. The whole thing, you know, it's a dynamic situation. Companies aren't just stuck in one category. They can move around over time. Uh, something to look out for a slow grower is something called what Peter Lynch calls diversification, which is where they've got money. They don't really know what to do with it, the management of the company. And they buy other businesses or invest in things that they don't really know anything about. Now, if you are going to own these stocks, they should be paying a very high dividend or at least buying back shares. So that's how you get your return. You're not really going to get much return from the share price appreciation. You can go periods of sort of 10 years without the stock price uh, moving at all, really. So you don't really want too many in your portfolio unless uh, you think they're going to change or you can actually buy them at a discount. So I have several slow burrows in my portfolio. I bought them at um, at least a 50% discount to what I think their value is. So we've kind of gone to what you might call the medium growers or the stalwarts, as Peter Lynch describes them. This is where you've got kind of six to ten percent growth rate in earnings. They tend to be very large corporations, and they also tend to have very low risks of failing. So these are big names that have been around for a long time, and the best way to make money from them is to actually buy them when they have a dip. You can make 30 to 50% in a couple of years. And if you do make 30 to 50% in a couple of years, that should be deemed as a very good return. And then you should consider selling them as a general rule of thumb. Uh, and then they do also, because they're big corporations with low risk of failure, they do offer protection during hard times. And again, look at the ones that are diversifying. So they've been around for a long time. They start trying out new markets they know nothing about. Have Keep an ear out for that. Generally best to avoid those companies. Now we get on to the most exciting, which is the fast grower. Now you're looking at something that's growing at maybe 15 to 25% on earnings. And these are the guys that are really going to make you the money. But a couple of things to look out for with that growth rate. If the growth rate is above 25%, then there is a big risk that actually becomes so exciting and so appealing, it's almost like a hot industry. And the amount of competition increases, so you want to avoid that. If you can find a fast grower in a boring established industry, that's even better. Now they should also have a USP to be growing this fast as well. Now the other thing to note with these, no business can grow 25% a year indefinitely. They will have to stop growing eventually. So you need to have a think about what their kind of maximum size is and how well they can scale. They're a very young company, they're at risk of scaling up. So you need to find some that has scaled up. If you think about an American uh, department store, you don't just want one that's in one city or one state. Have they been in five states and has it worked in those five different states? And if so, they've got potential to exponentially grow to the 50 states, for instance. Keep that in mind. Uh, and these are the guys that get you your 10 baggers, 
20, 40, 100, even 200. Um, and you, you don't have to go in straight away. You can wait at that early period until they have made a profit, proven the concept works. Then you can go in and still make 10, 20, 50 times. And there isn't that compulsion to go in right at the beginning to make 200 to 500 times. Um, you can reduce your risk of it by waiting. Now, you only need a couple of these to make an amazing portfolio, especially if you have a small portfolio. Um, you know, three of these in your lifetime, you could make an absolutely massive amount of money. Uh, and the way to identify them is not just with that growth, they need to have profitability and a, and a good balance sheet so they can withstand uh, the scaling up and they've got the financing to do so. But at the end of the day, it's all about earnings and those earnings keep growing, the share price will keep growing on average. But do be aware of the market. If that growth rate starts to drop, so it goes from 25 to 15, 15 is still a good growth rate, but the market will probably look poorly on their share price if that growth rate produces. So you really need to keep cranking out that same or higher growth rate each year. So if you can find the fast growers, fantastic. You're going to make some money. Now we then get on to the other three types. So the first one is what Peter Lynch calls asset plays. And this is where you can use your own edge in industries or use your own skills to investigate and find companies which have situations, perhaps where they have under-discovered assets or assets that are unappreciated by the general Wall Street market. Uh, perhaps an example of this could be Seritage Growth Properties in the USA. Uh, an example in the UK could be BT. So BT, everyone knows the name. They've got the EE mobile network. They've got broadband going. It's probably 10 million homes. They've got men in vans. And I think that company is potentially undervalued based on its market price. Now, these asset plays are really good ones and very difficult to discover, and they do need a bit of investigation. So you won't find too many, and you do need a bit of patience because it may take time for the market to realise those undervalued assets. Okay, the fifth and sixth uh, type is the turnarounds. This is where perhaps the price is less related to what's going on in the market. But a very big point to note is, you know, in every investment you make, you've got a risk of loss of capital, but it could be quite low in some cases. But with turnarounds, it's very high. So if you're unsure about any of them that you look at, don't invest, just pass. There'll be others. And even if you are sure, uh, let's say you have 10 turnarounds over time, some of them will fail even if you performed solid investigations. But you'll need a handful of them to work because the rewards are significant. Now, a turnaround could be something like a company that's significantly diversified and they're trying to correct their previous mistakes. It could be a company that looks like it's going to go bust. But the potential returns are very large if the turnaround succeeds. And last but not least is the cyclicals. This is where the earnings go up and down in cycles, generally related to the market, but potentially to other things. So with the cyclicals, it's all about the timing of the purchase. If you are able to purchase when they are at a low point in their cycle, then you can make a lot of money. If you purchase at the wrong time, you could easily lose 50% um, and it can take many years for the price to recover. But there is an element of predictability. You can take advantage. But if you buy at the wrong time, then you're in a bit of trouble in terms of making your money back. Again, patience will be required because it can take a few years for them to work through their cycles. So those are the six types. So I've just done a bit of a mock-up here for my portfolio. So if we start at the kind of 12 o'clock position, I've got 22% of my um, portfolio, of the, the stock element, that is, this, this excludes indexes, for example, but the individual companies. Uh, yeah, about a fifth is in the slow growers, which is probably slightly higher than I would want it to be by design. But these are generally purchased with a margin of safety. So they were on discount. So there is an upside if I've got 50% off there is a 100% upside there for them to get back to what I think their intrinsic value is. And the dividend is quite uh, good on these companies as well. My largest holding there is the Unum Group. It pays a very nice dividend and it was quite below book value when I purchased my first tranche. Then got to about a fifth, well, exactly a fifth in stalwarts. Uh, Unilever is the biggest one of that. So that's given me 9% a year compound return over about seven or eight years. And then, uh, pleasingly, I've found that the largest element of my portfolio is the fast growers, 30%, uh, and bank owes K fits into that. The earnings per share growth the last 10 years averages at 20%, which is exceptional. 
an asset plays a little bit small now so dropbox 12 percent of the portfolio is in asset plays and the reason i put dropbox in asset play is that they have potentially up to 600 million users but they've only monetized that for i can see around about 15 million or so of those they've got this massive asset the number of people that have used their service and know about them and they just if they monetize a decent percentage of that then they're on to a winner um, turnarounds smallest segment uh, of course they are very difficult to identify and for me walgreens is the one that fits into their it's a business that's been struggling but they've got new management coming in they've sold part of their business to give them a cash injection and um, i think there's potential turnaround there especially with the immunization situation as well vaccine situation a lot of that will be delivered through their facilities and then finally uh, cyclical so 10 percent i've mentioned shell already and that's my largest sort of cyclical holding so these are kind of your your oil companies for example the key thing i would say for you to do is if you haven't done this is first of all assess your companies and make that kind of view that i've just showed how your portfolio is broken down the important thing is to compare it to your investing objectives. If your investing objective is, you know, you're 20 or 25 and you've got 40 years before you want the money, actually, you probably don't need to take too much of a risk in loads turnarounds. You can actually just get things compounding over the long term. So you might take a few more stalwarts, for example, uh, because over time they'll give you a decent return and they'll compound nicely. Whereas if you are perhaps like one of my, my good friends who say just around about 40 and he wants uh, access to a pot of money at 55 and he's just starting, you probably don't want too many slow growers or stalwarts in that portfolio. You're probably going to want a higher balance towards the fast growers because you need to have a return more quickly. So there's, there's no ideal kind of uh, allocation between the six different categories but it's worth doing so you can see have you got the right shape of the overall portfolio i hope you found that useful um i do highly recommend the peter lynch book if you haven't read it before if you have read it read it again it's, it's that good i'm on my second reader which is finishing and i'm going to read it again it's fantastic every time i read it i think of new ideas and i get new insights from it Fantastic. So thank you for spending part of your day with me and I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers for now.